Hello guys, I've assembled a few of the little boards here. So we have our main control board, our little uh, motor driver kind of shield, and I have a NRF on uh, pins to plug it in, just so that we can test it out. So what I'm going to do is program up this chip. First we'll burn the Arduino bootloader to it, and then we'll upload a sketch, and we'll test it out then. Test out this board, and then test out the motor driver. So I'm going to use an Arduino Uno to upload the bootloader to our little module here. And the way you do that is uh, you take out the communication pins here, which happen to be in the same connector here as the NRF module, and then the reset pin. So if we hook up our connector here, um, be like this here. So plug that fill in there. Then our reset pin is down here. That's them all connected, and then we just go into the bootloader, plug this in, into your Arduino IDE, and the bootloader option's there, which I'll show you now. So once you have your Arduino hooked up, or your new board hooked up to your Arduino, which you're using at the programmer, come into your Arduino uh, IDE here, go Tools. Now make sure you have the Pro Mini, so the Pro Mini I want to program onto this board. It's the Atmega 3285 volts, that's the one I normally use and it's coming up as the Arduino Uno because that's what we're using as a programmer so select port 5 then all we have to do uh, Arduino as ISP oh yeah one more thing you should have gone into examples here and there's Arduino ISP right so that's in serial programmer so or in series programmer maybe something like that but um, anyway you have to upload that sketch to your Uno first so before you wire it up, open up that sketch there and upload it to the UNO. Then wire it up and come back here. Make sure that it says Arduino as ISP there. And then we'll try and burn our bootloader. Now we have a problem. And if we go up here, it says it's expecting this signature. And that's the one that it has. And you can see here it says AVR dude. So what we need to do there is you go into your C uh, files and do a search for AVR dude and you'll get this AVR dude dot conf so this file is like the configuration file for all the different uh, chips that we use I think so what we want to do here is go down to well, I have ush wrote in here so I know where it is so I have ush in wrote in here but if you look it's this one here you're looking for. Um, so it's an Atmega 328 and that's the one we're going to use. We're using an Atmega 328 so probably just search for Atmega 328 and then come down here to this part where it says the signature. So that's the signature that it told us it was seeing and it told us it wanted to see this one so this little hash it comments out this line so I'm going to make that line active and I'm going to comment out the other one and I'll just save that now if we go back to our Arduino IDE we'll go back to programmer or to burn bootloader so everything's right there we already had that so this time we shouldn't get the error and this time it looks like it went perfectly so writing reading no errors there so now that we've burnt the bootloader we should be able to upload our sketch for our tractor now okay so now that we have our program uploaded to the chip we need to use a FTDI cable something like this which has a connector well actually it has a connection like that on it and I just kind of made this little connection to bring us down to the 1.27 millimeter connector but that's what you're going to need. You need to hook that up to your chip. And you do that through the little connector on the back here. So, in like that. Ground is in the middle. And now we go back to the Arduino IDE and upload the program to the chip. Alright, back with the Arduino IDE. Uh, we need to select our COM port. It's COM port 2 in my case. It's the FDDI cable. Because COM port 1 is the physical COM port on the back of the computer. So... 
I know that it's Comport 2. On your computer, it might be different. Uh, these are all going to stay the same because it's a Pro Mini that we're after uh, burning the bootloader off. So the new board is now a Pro Mini, and we told it it was that configuration, so that's what's going to be. So all of that stays the same. But we have changed the ID here in our, our avrdude.conf uh, file. So we need to change that back or we'll get the error. So again, this is commenting out this line and we're bringing this one back in by deleting that. Let's save that. I use, um, what's this, textpad. That's what I use for editing these files. It's a little bit easier to use. And now we go back to our TW. And that's the program I want to upload, or that's the sketch that I want to upload to our new board. So should hit upload, and we shouldn't have any trouble. It's writing. Then it reads what it's written to check that everything has uh, uploaded correctly. And that went perfectly, so we are now uploaded. Uh, we have the TW, so if I go to my controller, it'll come up as ID1 and we'll be able to control this board. Okay, so we have our controller hooked up. We need to add our NRF module. So that hooks in the back here like this. Kind of hard to see so from so far behind the camera. But that should be that hooked up and now we need to get a power source for it. Okay, so I have a little connector here it's going from this uh, 2.54 spaced uh, header to uh, 1.27 and I'm just going to plug that in there. It's the positive is at the top on this side followed by the ground. So with that hooked up, let's go into our TW and this little symbol should disappear. I'll get a battery. So that's disappeared, we've had no data transmitted for long enough that that's disappeared, so let's hook up the battery here. Well, obviously I didn't just hit it with the hammer, I actually tried to figure out what was wrong. and. After I'd played around with it a little, I kind of noticed that uh, sometimes it would seem to connect for the very second that you connect the battery to it. It would seem like you'd get a connection and then it would drop away, which made me think that it was a power supply issue. And it's something that I kind of thought might happen because I had moved to this smaller uh, little regulator there. It's the guy with the five pins. Um, that is only good for about 300 milliamps because we've kind of gone that small whereas our LM uh, LM1117 3.3 volt regulator was good to nearly an amp I think uh, provided you had uh, adequate shielding or uh, thermal uh, dissipation through your PCB which we wouldn't really have because our PCB is so small but at the same time uh, unless something goes wrong we're not really going to draw that much current so it doesn't really matter but at least it would be able to supply the power that we needed at the 3.5 or the 3.3 volts and that's really most important for this little chip here I knew that the board itself was working because I had used it in this other little uh, idea which you'll see in another video but the RF part seemed to be where the problem was so I changed out the regulator here for this one that's why you can see it's kind of bodged in there I've my wires connected into the power rails as best as I could Um obviously that part is so much bigger than uh, than this other one that it's not gonna just fit in perfectly but I still had the problem and the next most obvious thing was to try a 10 microfarad capacitor on the NRF because that's a kind of a common problem and I thought it might be an issue I hadn't thought of it when I was designing the board but I thought it might be an issue because I had moved my uh, 10 microfarad capacitors away from the connection for the for the NRF and that was purely to fit everything on the little board 
just if we go back to look at the original board there's the 10 microfarad capacitor and there is the pins for the NRF so that would have been right beside it so that little change could have made a difference so to test it out I just soldered one in there you can see it's kind of bodged on again and sure enough when I power this one up you'll see that we have a connection okay well here we are again uh, we're all wired up basically it's exactly the same as it was before so if I connect this battery there is our connection and we'll just watch it for a couple of seconds to make sure that it's stable it doesn't start to disappear it, it seems to be receiving the data there fine so it looks like those changes have worked well there's not much point continuing until we have this board working so what I'll do is make the changes to the PCB files send them off and get another batch of 10 made since it's only costing a couple of dollars so why wouldn't we just make a new board that we know is going to work and try that out so in the next video we'll hopefully have the new boards that will be functional and we'll be able to test those out properly I also think I'll get another one of these motor driver boards made only we'll put two motor driver chips on it so we can drive four motors and the reason I'm doing that is I have a, a CQ control vent with a loader that I want to control from my own board and to do that I need four motor drivers so I think that's what I'll do so if you liked that video make sure and hit the like button and if you have any suggestions let me know below the video and don't forget to keep an eye on the channel for the next video but that's all for today so thanks very much for watching